Welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 15b. This tutorial illustrates how to account for sales and leaseback transactions under IFRS. This tutorial has four learning objectives. The first learning objective is to record the sale of an asset from a lessee to a lessor to be leased in a sale and leaseback transaction, or sold, including any deferred gains or losses under IFRS. The second learning objective is to record the purchase of the asset for lease by the lessor from the lessee. The third learning objective is to review the calculation of the lease payments by the lessor. The fourth learning objective is to prepare required journal entries to account for assault for the lessee and the lessor under IFRS. This tutorial is based on the Fleetwood Incorporated and Mac Limited B example. Please ensure you download and review the accompanying data and requirements before proceeding. The first requirement is to calculate the lease payment as determined by the lessor. Using your financial calculator, enter the following variables. 10 N. 6 IY. 11 million plus minus PV. 0 FV. And make sure your calculator is in begin or BGN mode. Computing PMT will result in a lease payment of $1,409,950. Requirement to ask us to prepare all the 2020 journal entries for Fleetwood Incorporated, Lessee, and Mac Limited, Lessor, to account for the sale and leaseback transaction under each of the three scenarios. Let's start with scenario number one where the selling price is $12 million versus a $15 million fair value, resulting in a difference of $3 million. Recall from the data that the lease term is 10 years and the implicit rate in the lease is 6% and is known to the lessee. Also recall that prior to the derecognition of an asset, we must make sure we have the correct carrying value. The building was purchased on January 1st. 2020, for $7,500,000 and is depreciated over 20 years with no residual value. Therefore, at the year end of December 31, 2019, just prior to the sale on January 1, 2020, the carrying value of the building can be calculated as $7,500,000 divided by 20 years, then multiplied by the 10 years that have lapsed from 2010 through 2019 inclusive. This results in a carrying value of $3,750,000. From requirement 1, we know the payment is $1,409,951. The lessee takes the lessor's payment and calculates the present value of the minimum lease payments as follows, 10 N, 6 IY. 1,409,951 plus minus PMT 0 FV and compute the present value to result in $11 million. Now we must calculate the rights of use, ROU, valuation by taking the carrying value multiplied by the ratio of the lease value over the fair value less the difference between the selling price and the fair value. So take 3,750,000 and multiply by 11 million divided by 15 million, then subtract the 12 million selling price from the 15 million fair value, that difference is negative 3 million, the result is an ROU valuation of $5,750,000. This ROU asset includes the $3 million difference between the selling price and the fair value, and is basically a prepayment of the lease payments. Now we can prepare the journal entry for the lessee who is the seller. We debit cash for the 12 million selling price. We debit a ROU asset account for the 5,750,000 calculated RU valuation. We credit the asset's current carrying value of 3,750,000 to derecognize it. We also credit a sales and leaseback transaction, or sold. Liability account for the $11 million present value of the lease. This results in a $3 million gain to balance our journal entry. Finally, we can prepare the journal entry for the lessor who is the buyer of the building. This one is pretty easy. 
simply debit a ROU asset to account for the 15 million fair value, credit cash for the 12 million cash paid, and credit the difference of 3 million to a financial asset account. Now let's move on to scenario number two, where the selling price is equal to a $15 million fair value. In this scenario the carrying and lease value are the same as under scenario one however, the ROU valuation will be calculated more simply as 3,750,000 multiplied by 11 million divided by 15 million. For the seller lessee entry, we debit cash for the 15 million selling price. We debit the ROU asset to count for the 2,750,000 calculated ROU valuation. We credit the asset's carrying value for 3,750,000. We also credit a sales and leaseback transaction, or SALT, liability account for the $11 million present value of the lease. We balance our journal entry with a $3 million credit to a gain on sale account. Note, the gain is still $3 million because the ROU asset is $3 million less than when the selling price was below the fair value. Finally, we can prepare the journal entry for the lessor buyer. This one is even easier, and we debit the ROU asset to count for the $15 million fair value, and credit cash for the $15 million cash paid. There are no other differences to account for in this scenario. Finally. Let's look at scenario number three, where the selling price of $17 million is greater than the $15 million fair value. In this scenario, the carrying and lease values are the same as under scenario one, and the ROU valuation will be calculated similar to scenario one by taking the carrying value multiplied by the ratio of the lease value over the fair value, less the difference between the selling price and the fair value. That's 3,750,000 multiplied by 17 million divided by 15 million, then subtract the 17 million selling price from the 15 million fair value. That difference is $2 million. The result is an ROU valuation of $2,250,000. Notice this time the ROU asset does not include the $2 million difference between the selling price and the fair value and is considered to be additional financing. For the seller lessee journal entry, we debit cash for the 17 million selling price. We debit the ROU asset to count for the 2,250,000 calculated ROU valuation. We credit the asset's carrying value for 3,750,000. We credit the salt liability account for the $11 million present value of a lease and record a 4,500,000 gain as the remaining credit. Finally, we can prepare the journal entry for the lessor buyer, where we debit the ROU asset to count for the 15 million fair value, credit cash for the 17 million dollar cash paid, and debit the 2 million dollar difference to a financial asset account. And here is a summary of all three scenarios presented together for comparison purposes. Make sure you review these carefully to identify the differences between each scenario. And now let's review some key points to remember. Under IFRS, SALT transactions must be evaluated against the IFRS 15 revenue recognition criteria to determine if the transaction is a sale. In the case of a sale, the seller lessee will derecognize the carrying amount of the asset and record a right of use. ROU, asset on a proportionate basis. In scenarios where the selling price is less than the fair value, the difference is included in the ROU asset calculation for the seller, and the difference is considered to be a prepayment of the lease payments by the lessee. In scenarios where the selling price is more than the fair value, the difference is excluded from the ROU asset calculation for the lessor and the difference is considered to be additional financing provided by the lessor. If the transaction is not a sale, the treatment will follow IFRS 9, Financial Instruments, where the seller lessee will not derecognize the asset, and instead will record a financial liability equal to the proceeds. This concludes Tutorial 15 Beyond Sales and Leaseback Transactions under IFRS.
To learn about sales and leaseback transactions under ASPE, please review tutorial 15a.